So welcome back to another video. I've hoped like you're the other ones and I'm helping people out. I get comments a lot that I am helping people out because no one really shares this information willingly. Um, so we've gone over warm regulators before we even and stuff, but warm regulators have a diaphragm in it and it's vitally important for the car running and perform properly. Now, they are 30 odd years old now, they're falling apart. This one um, had failed, well it's been rebuilt so they're being replaced anyway. So our friends over in Germany have supplied these kits. Um, so what we'll do, we'll tear this apart. I've got a knack of one, as I've got a boxes of stuff. I've got a knack of one which I can physically, I'll physically show you on a vacuum gauge that it's not getting any vacuum unless I cover this port, which is an atmospheric port. And then um, I'll go through the process, what we're doing, rebuilding it, how we're doing it all, back together, and then we have vacuum without covering that port, win-win. And then all you need to do then is get on the car and reset your warm and cold pressures um, because when we change the pin, obviously it moves all these settings. So we'll get on to that and I'll see you in a minute. So first off, what I'm going to do is show you what a warmer regulator shouldn't be doing. So again, we've got quite a few lying around. So this is your basic 16 valve or Porsche or anything. Pretty much all of these are exactly the same. So as we know from our other videos this is your diaphragm port with your vacuum input from the engine this is just atmospheric pressure and i'll show you something in a minute so what you want is some kind of pressure so that's all in there all i'm going to do is try and get some pressure so we want this gauge quite high as you can see it's not doing anything and if you can hear this i put it by the mic it's blowing straight out so that is our main diaphragm damaged and split now watch this see we've built some pressure that is because our main diaphragm is broken but also because these run a double diaphragm system the other diaphragm which sits above it is split which means when the engine is running or idling the engine is drawing air from here through here so you've got a massive air leak across these so that is one way to test it or if you haven't got these you can literally just blow through it you can blow through if it blows through you've got problems or if you can suck on it um and literally suck on it and stick your tongue on it if there's no suction there then you've got a problem so we pulled our one regulator apart so you're left with something like that, that's the inside of it, we don't need that bit. We don't need the back casing. What we do need is this bit. This is a bit that's broken. So on the back we can see a 30 year old diaphragm. So this is your main diaphragm, the darker circle. And this is where you do your warmer regulator more than adjust it. And on the flip side, that's the other side of the pin. Now there's a diaphragm here, this one. The other diaphragm is inside here. So well, how, how am I meant to replace that? You can buy the kits. I'll put the link to who I would buy the kits from in the description. Um, for example, this is another one that's I've acquired. That's the diaphragm in there, if you can see. Obviously, it's slit, split and fallen apart. And this is the, the rebuild kit that was whoever built this. Um, that's not a very good diaphragm. It's not even that strong. Um, and for it to split, that's not that old. So that's one one um, poor quality diaphragm that I wouldn't use. Again, I've got tried and tested things I use. These are the diaphragm kits I've got. These are from missingparts.de. Obviously, I speak to Ruben quite a lot. He is one of the... Mm, what's the word? He's happy to help. You've got a lot of companies out there who supply parts and are not interested in helping you. Ruben is more than happy to help. I recommend them because I've used their parts in all the metering heads I do. If I need specific parts, I go straight to him because they are proper quality. So, this is a bit here. We've got our kit. Now what we need to do... This is the diaphragm out of that one. So, as you can see, this diaphragm is absolutely shot. Now, if you can see closely in there... 
a little zoom in or not, where all the cracks are, and you've got the lighter brown, that's the sort of um, structure of the membrane. And then the flaky bit is your, um, I don't know what to call it really. The air will get through that light brown stuff. And the dark brown stuff, the air won't get through, if that makes sense. So once you get this apart, it will come apart if it's broken. What you want to do is remove this. We need this. So get your round key. Obviously, I've done most of this. Unscrew it. Now, these are very, very, very fine threads. Um, so we don't damage that. So take that out. Don't need that. Put that in the bin. We'll keep it for some reason. So we need this. So keep that to the side. Now, how do we get it off? Well, once you've pulled all this off, because it will just come off, you've got these bits here. Now, these are just aluminium press parts. It's all aluminium. There's nothing strong about these that's going to cause problems taking apart. Now, you need to take these heads off. And if you look closely, there's a circle inside the big circle. Now, that smaller circle is the actual diameter of the pin going through it. And the other larger bit is where it's been pressed together. So all you need to do is many ways to do it. You can drill that head off. You only want the head bit off. Drill it off, file it off, quick grind on there until that head's come off and you're left with just the pins. And literally, get a hammer and a punch and just pop them out and they'll pop out. And once they pop out, you'll be left with this. So, like I say, taken the tops off, knocked them through, and then you're left with this. And... This is our inner diaphragm, which, as you can see, is not much good anymore. Again, it's all splitting. If I, I put it on the mic, that's all that, just crumbling. So let's get on, get the kit out, and show you exactly what we need to do to build it up. So this is what we've got in the kit. We have our replacement diaphragm, our replacement inner diaphragm, two sealing washers, a nut system and thread, which is what we need to marry up with our original adjuster. Then we have a spacer and some nuts and bolts to put it all together. So this is how we put our top out diaphragm in. Now, if you notice, we'll wake up. There we go. You notice the profile of that is very similar to the top out diaphragm. For reasons so that goes in there line the holes up get this part making sure it's the right way around the raised bit goes to the top put that in there get with your little screws i put the screw heads from this side and then nut and bolt this side so i'll come back in a minute when i've done that so here is our top hat diaphragm installed screw heads in there i do it because there's a diaphragm sitting as well the nuts obviously sit a bit higher up, so I don't want the diaphragm to contact them. So they're all sat in nicely. So as you can see, a bit of diaphragm movement there. Now, next bit is to put this diaphragm on. And obviously from the factory, it's all pressed together. But with these kits, it's step by step, put it all together, and then it works. So let's do the next bit then. So once we're on there, now we need to get the main diaphragm on. So we have this little spacer. That needs to go over the threaded portion first. Then when it's all tight, that clamps against the other side of that, and that seals that blue diaphragm. And then we have these washers. Now you want these, you see the raised lip, that needs to go away. So you want the smooth side against the diaphragm. Now the diaphragms only go on one way. When you put it on, it should line up perfectly with all the holes, like so. Then you have your other washer, again, raised side away the diaphragm and then we have a lock ring so just put that on there you don't want it mega tight but how i do them is get it to the point the gasket is lined up just put your thumb on the gasket that's as tight as you want it really and then what i'll do i'll put a torque pen mark on there which is like glue pretty much and it should stop that raising up or what you can do is um pretty much damage the thread to so get a tiny screwdriver and just knock it in there so it has no way of actually coming loose because if it comes loose the diaphragm will start working so as you can see we are now very similar like our original one 
So our original one with our knackered diaphragm and our new one with a nice new diaphragm. But we're missing the centre part. So again, this is the bit we bring over from the old one, goes through from the top, screw that down. Again, it's got very, very fine threads. Screw that in gently with your Allen key. Just do it to the point it, it all brings itself all together. Yeah, so it's just mated all the surfaces in. So I'll just back it off a turn, two turns. Because obviously, now we've done this, it needs to go back on the tester when it's built to reset all this diaphragm. So there you go. That is changing the diaphragm. Now, how do we prove it works? We'll put it back together and I'll put the vacuum on it and I'll show you it doing its job. So when you're doing this, you want to carefully make sure you've got the springs in the right place. So you want the large spring on the outside, little one on the middle. So when they're sat in there, nice like that, bit of pressure, hold it together, get your end part. Nicely like that, and then just hold it together like that, and then you can then get your nuts. Yeah, get your nuts, get your nuts and your screws, whop it in there. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Only nip it once because it's going to need a bit of shuffling. Oh, there's already one in there, bonus. Get it started on the thread and get it in there just to the point it's in there. And then you want to line the body up because obviously the body can go off centre. Obviously that can have an adverse effect on the springs. So what about on there? Little nip. Nip. Okay, I'll put the other two in there. Now you might wonder why myself and other companies charge quite a lot to do Walmart reglets on their own. Obviously, it works out cheap if you do it with um, a meter and head for me because there's not a lot goes into Walmart regulators. It's mainly getting them set working. But the expensive thing is these diaphragm kits. Obviously, Ruben and the people over there have had them specially made. Everything is perfect. Like from the example, the, the pin we put in the middle was a proper size one versus this other kit. I don't know where it's from, but you've got a tiny little silly pin in there you know it's it's a bit rubbish and if it's not tight enough or that's not on when you're do, undoing that to adjust the pressure you're just turning the whole lot which actually was happening with this so that is a i'd say i don't know what company it is not really interested all right make sure they're nice and tight because it needs a seal there we go so that's a diaphragm changed now let's plug the vacuum in and see what we got so here we are, we've got our vacuum all back together. Now, I'm not getting this covered like last time I had to cover that to even make some kind of vacuum. And now, we've got our vacuum is what we want. Now, just remember what the vacuum is doing. So from our, obviously the other videos I've done, this is the diaphragm here. So when you've got your vacuum from this port into the chamber, oh, that's crusty. Yeah, there you go. There's another example of old diaphragm. So again, once you've got the vacuum there, that has a impact on the middle spring. Because remember, the middle spring sits on the inner part, and the larger spring sits on the other part. So that is what the vacuum is doing. Now the inner part, again, once this is warmed up, you can watch other videos. I'll explain it a bit better in there. <coughs> once this is warmed up. That moves away and that centre bit larger spring isn't really doing much and then the governing force is that little spring and the vacuum obviously when the engine's got vacuum like when the throttle close you've got x amount of fuel pressure and then in the control pressure and then when you open the throttle obviously the vacuum then disappears because you've got a free flow of incoming air that then lowers the control pressure and allows the air flap to rise more giving more fuel and making the car go faster 
So just to recap, these are old. These might still work, but you might find the top up one in there is split. Again, holding, where's our demonstration one? Again, holding this um, atmospheric point allowed us to get some form of vacuum. And obviously that's not what you want to do. That is just a port on the inside of there. Because what you can do, if that's blocked, and you've got this here, you've got the other diaphragm in, inside there, the top out diaphragm. So you've got vacuum pulling on this port, and this is blocked. You've got you've got counteracting forces. So the top out diaphragm, little one, relies on atmospheric pressure in here for it to spring back and naturally hold where it needs to. Whereas if you've got vacuum pulling on there and that is blocked, when that the whole diaphragm double system is being moved down, there's a blockage in there, so there's no there's no freedom of movement of air. So the top hat diaphragm wants to come back up. But that's what that that vent is for. So when the diaphragm moves down, it's mo like the clump imagine a clump of air inside there. Top hat diaphragm moves down, all that air moves in a bit. Diaphragm gets released, goes back up. Obviously if that's blocked. That dive, top hat diaphragm is not going anywhere. So if you have got this one blocked, you'll probably see in there this is pretty that's pretty blocked anyway. So if you've got those blocked, that is also one way it's going to deliberately tear, well not deliberately, but one way it's actually going to tear that top hat diaphragm. So there you go. That is replacing your diaphragm, double diaphragm system on this type of warmer regulator. Again, it's fitted to 60 valve golfs. What else does it fit to? Audis, Porsches, um, BMWs, all sorts of vehicles. But it was the same principle applies. You can have this unit. I could tell you this unit's from a Porsche 911. It's not, it's off a Golf. But that can be from a Porsche 911. That can be from a Golf. There's no difference in them. Physically, the system still works the same. The only difference you'll have is the warm-up and the overall warm control pressure with and out vacuum. So there we go. Simple as that. I'll stick the link in the description to uh, missingparts.de. I say I'm not getting anything out of it, but credit where credit's due. They've helped me out. They'll answer questions if I need them when I'm really stuck. Um, and they supply the best parts. I'll see that diaphragm over there didn't last two minutes and it's just poor quality. The stuff in here is good quality. It's made properly. It's made by manufacturers, from what I've been told, who make gaskets. They make it out of proper good stuff. So. That one in there should last another 30 odd years. Happy motoring. So there we go. That is warm-up regulator diaphragms from broken parts to one that works. Hopefully I've covered it all. It's pretty straightforward to change the stuff. Again, I say it a lot, KJ is very, very simple, but the pinnacle, very important parts of it is getting the pressures set right and the warmer warm and cold pressures set where they should be you know anyone with a decent pair of um tools you know there's stuff on videos like this you can take this stuff apart and put it back together um but you've got to make sure when it's back in the car you need to set the pressure gauges you need to set the pressures right otherwise you'll change all this put it back in the car and it will run like absolute crap because you've changed the pin and you've changed those pressures mainly the warm pressures with and without vacuum so hopefully you like that See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you haven't, click subscribe, like the video. I take time out as much as I can to do as many of these videos as I can. I say as soon as something comes across my desk, um, I'm like, oh, let's do a video on that. Because somewhere out there can buy these kits and go, right, I need to do that. Because I think that's my problem, or that is my problem, etc, etc. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your feedback from all over the place, all over the world absolutely love doing it so i'll see you in the next one cheers for watching bye